I wonder how many time zones we are in. So Chicago oh, here. I'm in India, by the way. Okay, wow. We will be live in uh, now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. And uh, I would like to thank also uh, Digital Week Online for organizing the awesome week of uh, digital transformation. And special thanks also for Tech ABC, City ABC team, uh, led by Dennis Quarda, our host today. Uh, to arrange this great successful day for global digital transformation. And uh, to our speakers, thank you very much to give us uh, your time today and to share your insight. Uh, we have today some of the top uh, thought leaders in their field. Uh, we have uh, uh, Helen and we have Johannes uh, Dogan, we have Charles Brooks and we have Meet and Carla from all around the world, just uh, two minutes before we have been talking uh, how many time zones we are, but we are in like five different time zones. And this is amazing, the digital uh, world out bring us all together now in this uh, meeting and this event. And uh, special thanks also for all the viewers uh, today. Uh, today our talks will be, uh, I believe, very, very, very uh, interesting. We will talk about big data. We'll talk about cybersecurity, digital transformation, three big uh, uh, buzzwords. And I will try, I would like to try start the session with a short introduction uh, about each of our speakers that he can introduce himself. I will start with my myself. My name is Arias Shpib. I am a cybersecurity expert since 20 years. It's 20 plus, but I always like, uh, like an old friend of mine, skip the plus <laughs> and keep it by 20 is uh, enough. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of a cyber security company called Secra. Uh, we are specialized in cyber security consultancy. And uh, I am also the uh, co-founder of Telebiomics, a California based company focused on uh, very uh, unique uh, state-of-the-art technology for saving life in terms of uh, telehealth, uh, robotic, AI, and biotechnology. And I'm a very proud member of uh, Tech ABC. Uh, I'm uh, one of the board members in Tech ABC, where we are specialized as a technology house in building uh, a state-of-the-art uh, blockchain fintech platform powered by AI. And this is all about me now the important is you and I would like to start uh, for each of you the speakers we I would say uh, ladies first uh, let's start about Helen can you tell us a little bit about your background what you do what your exposure for cyber security big data well thank you for an awesome opening uh, I'm Helen Yu I'm out of Chicago uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Taigang Advisory um, that's a CXO as a service growth accelerator. Um, I started my career actually as an accountant and financial analyst. Uh, my curiosity and learning agility got me where I'm at today. Uh, learned to code as a consultant, Hyperion consultant, uh, designed and implemented 400 plus financial planning applications, uh, working with CFO and CIOs early in my career. And then I, you know, we were acquired by Oracle uh, I run Oracle BI consulting practice and then also a solution architect at Oracle um, with the pleasure, added pleasure of learning from Oracle executive VP at that time, Keith Block. Um, and under his uh, tutor launch, I learned the nuances of enterprise solution sales there. Then I learned about marketing and SaaS at Adobe. Um, and, and then I successfully led the startup to scale up challenge at Marketo. So my journey really led me to recognize critical gap patterns in growth-driven technology startups, uh, really prompting me to become an entrepreneur uh, of today. And then technology, right? And then everything about technology really piqued my interest. That's why uh, what I'm doing today. My firm, we do manage, we offer managed uh, security as a service as well. So it's an honor to be here with all of you and look forward to our discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Johannes, uh, would like to give us a couple of words about your background 
and what you do and uh, your exposure to cyber security? I'll be happy to. Uh, my, my name is Johannes Droghaag, but most people call me JD because that's much easier to pronounce. I believe that only when you are either Dutch or Arab speaking, you can pronounce it properly with the kh. Otherwise, it will just hurt your throat. So stick with JD. That works very well for me. I'm used to that. Um, I'm the founder of Spearhead Management, where we focus on leading change from within. So we're not implementing new instruments. We say we take what the people have and what they have to offer, and, and together we will find new ways to embrace change and to be happy about change. It's a, it's a mindset approach that we, that we prefer over methods and technology. When it comes to cybersecurity, I work in the same field. My focus is the human element. I, I, I publish about that, I write about it, I have an upcoming book about it. I really leave the technical components to the technical specialist because my theory, and unfortunately that theory always gets confirmed, what we understand as human beings compared to what happens in the technology field is roughly one month development in our head compared to 10 years development in the technology field. So we have an enormous gap between how we learn to operate things in a secure manner and how technology uh, grows and, and how it gets implemented. And that's why I focus on. And it's for me always the most important thing to see when you enable people to do the right thing in a secure way, they will unless they are hackers, and those are the ones you're looking for, of course. But unfortunately, most people still get those generic once a year, not specific trainings, which don't bring them anything for their daily tasks. And that's where I jump in. And, and I know that, for example, my buddy Chuck from the other side of the, of, the, of the Pacific does exactly the same. It's technology, yes, great, fantastic, but let's help the people work in a safe manner. That's yes. me. Excellent. Well, it's very interesting, uh, JD. I believe uh, the human factor is, uh, unfortunately, is always in a lot of strategy. What the big enterprise, uh, they focus on investing money in digital transformation, technology, and they neglect the human factor, which is, I believe, is one of the most, most important uh, part, actually. You need to have human technology, and then you will go with the, the planning and execution. Exactly. Interesting. We will come back uh, again on this uh, point with the human factor, Jenny. Uh, Charles, uh, would you please uh, give us uh, a glimpse about your impressive uh, background in cybersecurity? Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I've been involved in, in my career in, in actually four areas um, that also include cybersecurity, but it's been uh, industry, academia, uh, media, and um, I've also uh, been in government. In government, I've served twice as a presidential appointee. Uh, one time at the, when they created the Department of Homeland Security, I was one of the actual original people helping set it up. So it's been an interesting uh, journey, particularly back then when there really wasn't a, a concern with cybersecurity, but more about other threats. But uh, so my, my career has done that. I've been on that path. And uh, most recently, I've been teaching at Georgetown University as adjunct faculty in, in two areas. One is cybersecurity risk management. And the second one, which also uh, is, is pertinent to what we're talking about today, is in, in uh, applied intelligence, and it's dealing with uh, disruptive technologies in organizational management. So I think of, of all the things I've been doing, uh, you know, academia is the most rewarding because you get to pass on your knowledge to other people and you continue to learn yourself. In my spare time, I, I write for Forbes. Um, I'm a technology writer for that. And in, in my most recent, I. Uh, Career, I was with uh, General Dynamics Mission Systems, a defense firm, where I led their uh, growth uh, strategy uh, efforts for uh, cybersecurity, new cybersecurity products and services. But now I'm on my own in uh, Brooks Consulting uh, International, and I'm doing mostly uh, uh, public policy um, and, and doing uh, advice for, uh, as, as uh, JD said, on, on uh, human factors and other aspects of, of preparing for cybersecurity. Interesting. Very impressive. Excellent. Uh, Nitan, would you share uh, with us a little bit uh, about uh, your background in cybersecurity? We have a uh, um, very, very uh, uh, interesting uh, people here and very experienced, very well experienced. I know you, Nitan, also uh, 
you had uh, a very long uh, journey uh, in this area, especially in big data analytic, and uh, uh, we would like to hear it from you, please, uh, a little bit. Sure, thank you, thank you, and it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Thank you to our uh, good friend Denise Garda and the Digital Week Online to give you know all of us this opportunity. Uh, great concept, you know, uh, uh, 100 country, countries and 200 speakers, you know, that's why we have so many time zones, you know, to match for to. So I appreciate, you know, the, the, the planning, which has gone beyond, you know, all this uh, uh, event, you know, to match the time zones and everything. So, uh, so as you know, I'm, I'm Nitin, uh, I'm, I'm based in uh, New Delhi, India, uh, been into technology space for almost about 20 years now. Uh, you know, I did my uh, master's in uh, information technology and uh, marketing uh, way back in 2001. And, uh, you know, since then been, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing best of both world, you know, between India and the Western world. And uh, presently, you know, heading uh, the India operations for the company called Alchemy. And, uh, you know, Alchemy has been known for uh, our uh, uh, you know work which we have done in the intelligence community on the the western side and uh, i managed the operations in india uh, you know we we have a team of uh, big data engineers data scientists data analysts uh, in gurgaon which is the satellite town to new delhi and uh, i think this is my 12th year with the organization uh, and uh, prior to that i was with oracle and uh, you know uh, uh, I think I was the, the core team to launch the Oracle Unbreakable Linux, you know, during that time when Oracle decided to come into the, the, the operating system, uh, you know, space. And prior to that, I was uh, uh, managing uh, uh, another tech-based company called Gossa and been managing operations from UK as well as US on the software development side and specifically on the KPU where uh, I think we were the first one to incubate uh, financial outsourcing as well as legal process outsourcing. So, so those were the, the you know, uh, uh, lineage which I carry. And, uh, you know, right now focusing on the, the uh, you know, for the reason we all of us are here, which is cybersecurity, big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and digital transformation. So we have many interesting stories from our implementation in the local market. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, what, what we have noticed, and I'm going to speak more about it, you know, I think the last seven, eight months has given us, uh, you know, the, the digital transformation acceptability, you know, which would have taken another four to five years. Yeah. Wow. Very interesting. Excellent. Thank you very much, Newton. Uh, we have today also uh, Fernando Martino, uh, it's online. Unfortunately, Fernando, he will be not able uh, to join us with video. Uh, he just, uh, his flight get delayed. I can imagine like uh, now everything crazy was flying and uh, everything else. And he is now on the way, uh, I believe, to a safe place where he can uh, switch on the video, hopefully later. Uh, Fernando, would you please give us uh, a short uh, introduction about your background in cybersecurity. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I, I started quite early, quite young, you know, anything related to software, computers, games. That was when I was quite young, you know, that was the thing that really attracted me initially. And then progressed, you know, and um, I, I had internet in 1993, so I go that far. <laughs> back here yeah. and uh, of course you know cyber security was always something that i was very interested at that age and then continue my career i became cto of some large organizations and smaller organizations medium size responsible for everything related to uh, information technology from data center security software development etc and and the big data uh, I came at, uh, around 2008, uh, 2009, yeah, I started to look at uh, uh, Hadoop systems. I had a team in Germany uh, already looking at Hadoop um, and then got involved as well with Google when I was uh, um, at the Google client board. Yeah, and they were quite early days for Google Cloud. 
and um, was uh, had a, a few guys from my team uh, helping Drew Khan in Google, which created a big query uh, data platform. Uh, so it was really, really early. They were not even, I think they would have just moved to beta at the time. And then uh, as well, Microsoft, I was at the uh, Microsoft Azure client board to move from Google. And uh, I started then um, uh, with a couple of guys, uh, Naoris, which is a, a, a distributed cybersecurity ecosystem. So yeah, I'm gonna cut short, you know, so I think it's enough about my background. So yeah, let's go to the questions, I think, yes? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, very much, Fernando. Um, I would like to share with our uh, viewer and participant in this, uh, in this event uh, or this session, uh, some information. It might be uh, some of you know it, but uh, just for us as a refresher, based on the statistic, the cyber crime will cost the world economy $6 trillion within 2021. Six trillion, not billion, six trillion dollars. It's a huge amount. It's a big numbers. And this make it uh, definitely very interesting and very lucrative business for cyber criminal because it's cheap. And uh, to get caught, it is the, 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 the possibility is very, very low. Now, according to the IDS uh, companies, technical analyst company, uh, they are expecting that by uh, 2025 we will have 41 uh, billion 41 billion uh, IOT devices worldwide can you imagine this number it's a huge number it's a lot of data going there the smart TV smart fridge smart spoon uh, everything is smart all the IOT the industry uh, the utilities with the smart uh, uh, meters it's a huge amount of data that we are generating every second now there is also a very interesting uh, study uh, i read or i found it's called from a report called catch 22 it's about digital transformation and its impact on cyber security the interesting numbers i found that 80 percent of leading european company are considering and putting Digital transformation, one of their top priority for the strategic plan. Great, and we need it, especially by after we, 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 after we found after the COVID-19, we really need it and uh, it's need to be accelerated. Now, the interesting numbers, what I would like to share with you, that 29% uh, 29 of this uh, company, they found increase uh, in the revenue. It's about 29% revenue in their uh, uh, in revenue increase from the digital transformation project they execute, which is great. This is what you want. This is the result you want as an enterprise, correct? You invest in digital transformation. You see that the revenue increased by 29%. This is a great achievement. Now, the interesting numbers is that 21% 20, um, of this leading company and uh, businesses, they didn't have any cyber security strategy in place. Wow. How you can invest and you see a return of investment and you don't protect your investment. This is uh, really unbelievable. And this is will guide us actually to, to, to would like to know from, from you, uh, uh, your opinion and how you See the cyber security involving our life, society, and organization, and how does this impact the digital transformation? I would like to hear your view on this. We start with uh, maybe, uh, as always, uh, ladies first. Uh, Helen, can you share with us? Uh, sure. I am glad I had some smart water, water this morning, so uh, just perfect. Um, Really, trusted data, if you think about, it, is the lifeblood of digital transformation. And in the era of trust economy, cybersecurity becomes a competitive advantage. However, you think about IT decision makers are not only incorporating cybersecurity among their top considerations when it comes to digital transformation, but also their, it becomes their second investment priority. It's right 
after the cloud, right? And then, but however, on the other hand, Gartner predicted that 60% of digital business would suffer major service failures as their security teams are challenged to manage digital risk. Um, these are enormous political, social, economic in implications. Why there is a disconnect? There are primary, I think there are three primary really causes uh, of the dis disconnects. Number one is the misalignment between IT and the line of business. Only 16%, right? Pullman report said only 16% of them are fully aligned. Uh, how many times have you, I mean, when I work with some of my customers, a marketing team decides to buy an, a tool, IT doesn't even know that ever happened, right? Not until we start doing the assessment. What? Another endpoint connection. So that's oftentimes happened very often, especially in a larger organization. Second reason is increased reliance on the third parties. Uh, and lack of internal third-party cyber risk management program, right? I'm being an advisor, oftentimes working with C-suite executives, and then I use my own device, right? And then oftentimes I have to ask them, hey, do you have any program or program to ensure, right? You got VPN in there, want to access your system, that's secure, right? And number three is the CISO. They're still struggling with having the visibility into the breadth of initiatives in their ecosystems. They may know, you know, overall these are five or six initiatives, but then they don't know, they can only rely on what reported to them, but having the full visibility into the risk uh, threat landscape is lacking overall. So those are the things that, uh, how that would impact uh, digital transformation overall. Interesting. Uh, we, we would like to keep this uh, session like a little bit uh, more interactive. Please just feel free uh, to, to interrupt, to ask, to give your opinion, whatever way you want. It is not like one by one and uh, everybody will give his opinion. It's really, it is joint uh, discussion. Uh, this not happened a lot uh, to have such uh, a great thought leader actually in one session. That's why please we want to hear all your uh, interaction with us. Uh, what do you think, Johannes, how it is that uh, cybersecurity will involving our society and organization well what what we need to what we need to keep in mind is when we focus on digital transformation we basically say customer first that's the starting point what's the benefit of the customer how can we serve the customer better and how can we generate more revenue or less cost by focusing on the customer and optimizing our processes in a digital way that's that's one side when we look at cybersecurity in most organizations, we make a thinking error by focusing on what we have excluded or what we believe that we are protecting ourselves against. And what we should be doing is take it from the victim perspective and, and work our way back. So assume that something went wrong and see how you deal with that. If we now manage to integrate that with digital transformation from the beginning, by design, we say, we are going to digitize this process, but we are also going, and we put on the red team head, and not just the pen testing, really red team critical thinking, and we start to immediately keep our thought press process about what if this goes wrong? What if this gets exposed? What if we need to change the process? What if this small step we now make has big impact on, on something we did six months ago, but we're not realizing that now. How can we respond to that? How can we minimize the damage? The moment we start doing that, we see two things happening. We get a little bit slower in our digital transformation because we have more thoughts to, to consider. But immediately after that, we start to get much more faster because we bring all this information together we have less rework in what we did because we thought a bit more about it and we reduce the risk. And, and that is what, what Helen also mentioned, the risk assessment and the risk management is still not covering the whole picture. The risk management is in most cases focused on the problems we had in the past plus what we are going to do next week, but not the full picture. And, and that is the biggest challenge in digital transformation for certain aspects. 
talk about cybersecurity, talk about inclusion, talk about accessibility. You need every single second the big picture. Exactly. When we look at being agile, we say, no, 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 small steps, focus on what we can do today, don't go into the waterfall. And, and that's a conflict. And, and the winners will be the ones who are able to combine that and who, and, and I love what, what Helen said about risk management being so important and also in too many cases underestimated. That is how we can improve it by learning ourselves to do small steps, but keep the big picture in mind. Sure, sure. I always like to, to call it uh, to, uh, at the customer, let's, let's have the, the helicopter view first from up and then we go down and we start to build step by step. It is always like baby step, step by step, we split the project. And, but we have already, we know what we will see later. We know what we are planning for later. No, well, very interesting. No, I love the helicopter view for, for a completely different reason. Um, everyone who has been in a helicopter knows that being in a hel helicopter means you don't see what happens below you. You yeah. feel completely, it's locked. You, you don't see a thing. So you depend on your instruments, on the people on the ground informing you what is happening. So the helicopter view is actually really good because you need very clear communication. You need very good relationships. I was told two months ago uh, in a conversation with, with Edwin Dinder that the Chinese expression is uh, eyes in the sky. I, I like that even better. But still, it means when you look from a certain height, you don't see the details. So you need that connection. You need that, that communication. You need understanding the priority of the small step and the priority of the bigger few. And, and that's where many organizations still struggle. They yeah, switch I, from I, one modus to the next. Definitely, I echo what JD just said, right? When you see the trees, you can't see the forest. So how yeah. do you want to see both? And that's really critical for companies to really see both. Uh, one of the companies I've worked with, they do really well. There's the CISO, corporate CISO has a regional CISO so that they ha he has his eyes and ears at each of the region. When you have running a global or a corporation, it's impossible for one person to provide oversight to everything because you do not know the regulation each every single country. And then you don't understand, the, you know, really that was already detailed, right? You need someone locally to hmm. turn that vision into strategy, into actionable uh, activities so that people understand, communicate, right? With the people in each area and region so that they can really have a community, community of cyber resilient, uh, resilience. Sure, sure. And how, how you see, like, based on what you hear, and this is very, uh, very interesting uh, insight, and I like uh, uh, Helen approach very much, and uh, JD approach, it is really uh, amazing. Uh, how you see the, uh, the cyber security can be an accelerator and can ensure the successful digital transformation? Because at the end, I don't want to invest in, uh, in a lot of money in my project, and that uh, digital transformation project, have everything in plan, the strategy, and get any attacks and I lose my reputation, all my money, all my investment is gone, uh, my business is all uh, down. And how, how you see uh, uh, Charles and Neaton? Yeah, and so I, I apologize here, but my table went out, um, so I had to create a personal Wi-Fi on my phone. <laughs> it took a couple of minutes, but that's technology that, that basically sums up. <laughs> Exactly. How we can ensure availability, actually, mm -hmm. exactly for this, the technology availability and our digital transformation plan is available. So that's resilient. Right? <laughs> and how <laughs> cyber security okay. can uh, So I think, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, it, it, uh, I was just for the previous comments that I heard from uh, Johannes and Helen, I, I think one of the things that needs to be done to ensure digital transformation, and, and I wrote an article recently in, in Corbett about this called Creating a Cyber Hub in Your Company. And that is really what they were talking about is integrating all the functions of a company or an organization or a government. So they work together. It's got to be collaborative because we're entering a, a world where technology is changing faster than policies and in our ability to assimilate them. And the only way you can address this new technology and digital transformation is to be all on the same page. And 
and a, a first step is, of course, it's, it's basically risk management, and you, you got to involve your your, your CISO, your CTO, your CIO, your sales, your marketing, your legal, and your whole C-suite in, in planning and creating a strategy. And without that strategy, uh, you're going to fail because uh, what happens with cybersecurity is that uh, small businesses get hit. Um, they have no plan. They have no uh, uh, way to recover. Uh, they go out of business. And that happens to a good percentage of them, maybe 20, 35, 30% of companies. And now that we're, we're facing so much uh, more of a sophisticated threat um, and we're all connected, six billion of us on the internet, um, we have to rely on each other. So I think collaboration is a first step uh, inside the company and creating this framework and, and, and a whole strategy, whether it starts with uh, where, you're, where you're finding out where your gaps are and, and, and developing a plan to, to make sure that you can address those gaps is, is a first step, both with digital transformation and cybersecurity. Sure. Thank you very much, Charles. Nitin, you want to add something, please? Oh, yes. Oh, obviously, yes. You know, so, yes, you have been waiting. <laughs> so I want to take a step back, you know, and, uh, you know, I had some numbers which we've been tracking since we are in big data. So, you know, I got an interesting fact which says that since the beginning of the time, you know, since the beginning of the humanity, uh, you know, till about 2003, the, the total amount of data which was generated was about 5 billion gigabytes. You know, this we are talking about, you know, from, from we started writing something on leaf and, you know, papers and blah, blah, blah. And in about 2011, the same amount of data gets generated in about two days. And 2013, it wow. takes 10 minutes to generate that kind of data, you know, and we are talking today, you know, which is, you know, post COVID or, you know, in between COVID and COVID-19 has taken us 10 years ahead in terms of our IT adoption or digital transformation, you know? So, so the, the pace of adopting digital transformation has quickened, you know? So, so last six, seven months, you know, you, know, you had a spike in uh, online education you had, uh, you know, uh, telemedicine adoption. You had uh, online streaming. You know, so 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 you know the the I was reading some statistics. The percentage, you know, high in terms of the digital streaming and telemedicine and education has gone high. So while the businesses, you know, were were adopting this change. And, you know, like the co-panelists said that, you know, the end goal is customer satisfaction and customer needs, you know, so the, so the adoption, the holistic adoption of data driven approach, you know, in our product, in our channel, in our demand, in leveraging the automation, you know, to, to even act on customer signals in real time. You know, so so the the e-commerce adoption. So so I come from a 1.3 billion population country in India. You know, so the the, the I've seen in the last six seven months the pace of technology adoption in these sectors, and you know, like like the board level, you know, the focus is always on the top line or the bottom line, and the message which I have done with my limited set of customers, you know, in in aviation and financial distribution house. In fact, an interesting analogy, you know, one of our client, which is a, you know, a 50 year old financial distribution firm adopted to digital transformation. And, you know, they said that, you know, we take cyber security or budgets on security as insurance, you know, because, because we want to spend it right now, you know, before, before it gets too late, you know, so that's a protection. So I've seen that change in shift, you know, from taking the, the cybersecurity budgets as overheads to, you know, as, 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 a, as an investment, you know, so they, so they invest in cybersecurity to protect their businesses, you know, you know, thank, you know, to the, to the real time news, you know, often we get to know, you know, the, the vulnerability and the data theft, you know, in the organizations. In fact, you know, not very long, just about 72 hours back, one of the largest diagnostic healthcare lab in India, you know, had a data leak. Millions and millions of records, you know, were, were open in the public domain. So, so the investment on cybersecurity 
and security, you know, having a cybersecurity resilience plan, I think is now getting gradually accepted on, on this continent, you know, this side of the world. Very interesting. Actually, Nitin, uh, thank you for, for, for mentioning this because it's lead us a little bit, uh, it's like a beginning for my uh, next question, uh, which is will be, now based on what you say, is big data now for us is a threat or is a blessing? And I would like to hear your, your view, actually, you and Fernando, because I know Fernando is dealing with uh, uh, big uh, data since very long time with Google and other uh, uh, big corporate you work for. Uh, what are the challenges the cybersecurity experts facing with the big data and how we can overcome that we not get paralyzed with all this analytic and all this uh, analyze of big data, actually? Can you please give us your view and then Fernando also, I would love to hear your point of view on this. You know, so so it's a tricky question, you know. So obviously, like yeah. like anything, there is a pros and cons to it. There are challenges and opportunities. I think on big data, you know, inherent, it comes with tools and technologies, you know, which can detect cybersecurity threats, you know. You know, so I take big data as AI, machine learning, you know, predictive, you know, a lot of these capabilities comes under the big, big umbrella of big data. So, so you know, while you have, uh, you know, combining the analytics, machine learning, and AI, uh, as long as you are proactive, and uh, you know, you accept, you know, that that cyber, uh, you know, threats could be a real threat. You know, so it's not that it's going to have, you know, have it to your friend or your competition. You know, someday it could happen to you. So as long as the board of the organizations are, are educated and informed about the threats of cybersecurity and there are budgets assigned to it. I would say, you know, big data could be a, you know, a boon to the, to the organization because of the inherent tools and technologies. And remember, we are talking about real time data. So, you know, having a policy and a plan and a team in place you know, you don't stop it there, you know, so, so it's, it's a continuous, in, you know, uh, it's an evolving space, you know, like, like we are adopting big data, we are adopting AI, we are adopting the, the machine learning technology to use good for our business. The bad guys are also equally, you know, technologically savvy, you know, to find the loopholes in the big data technology said, you know, so, so in our kind of business, we we capture data from various sources you know we, we we spoke about customer experience so to to give a personalized customer experience you not only you know capture their their master you know data on customer you capture their transaction you capture the the pattern you capture the the open source data including the social data you know so you you're you're getting data in a in a structured in a semi structured or unstructured format. So, you know, be cautious, you know, somewhere there would be a, you know, a loop or a gap, you know, where you'll be vulnerable to, you know, the cyber threats, you know. So, so net net, you know, as long as you are proactive, as long as you are informed and you're on your edge, you know, and towards cybersecurity and resilience to have a cyber plan, you know, I would consider it's a, you know, it, it's a boon, you know. It's a blessing, man. <laughs> I will understand. <laughs> Excellent. Fernando, how do you see this? Uh, can you give us, please, uh, a short overview about uh, how you, your opinion on the big data and how we can deal with big data and the threat uh, we're facing, the AI, how we can utilize AI to our benefit? Uh, very brief, because uh, we're coming uh, now near to our end of uh, the session. And I have a very important question for all of you who would like to hear your insight on it. Fernando? Okay. Yeah, sure. Can you can you hear me, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, you know, the, the problem today is that I don't think many people still uh, take the cybersecurity threats um, very seriously, you know. Um, and the more, the more data you, you have, it's just exponential, and the more vectors exist, and because as you said, many a lot of the data comes from IoT. There's no security standards for IoT. Everyone is doing their own stuff. So imagine, you know, all of that those analog things from 
fridges to I don't know kettles, whatever. Everything being connected, everything interact in the world, yeah, being connected uh, and becoming a uh, one more device as part of a, a, an army of many devices, yeah. So, um, of course, big data is important. Everybody should look at that. Machine learning, uh, AI, you know, all of those things have have to continue and we have to ac accelerate, in my opinion, the adoption, yeah, but. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, most people look at that because um, they can monetize all of those things. Yeah, it's all about, uh, you know, sales, more revenue, how I can do more stuff, you know, uh, and that's all good. Yeah, but I think there is a huge education still to be done on cybersecurity and the current threats because uh, it, today anything is hackable. Anything, just believe me, anything is tackled today. It's just a little bit of effort. Um, of course, depends if you do stuff uh, like distributed and, uh, and decentralized ecosystems with blockchain as, as its base, then you start to tackle some of these issues. But above all, it is about, I think boards should segment a lot more uh, of their uh, um, budgets to cybersecurity it has to become even more important than you, than you, you, today because of exactly all of those problems I'm, uh, I've been saying. And also because, and I'm going to be blunt about these, you know, uh, intelligence agencies across many different countries, I don't want to uh, make names, they are the ones who are actually causing these problems because they insist in back doors yeah, on some of the software that is out there. And we all know what that software, you know? Um, we're probably communicating with one of those at the moment, yeah? Uh, probably, no, we are, yeah? And of course then, someone else, the bad dudes, or uh, it could be your, or your competitor even, you know? Uh, to try to get some knowledge of what you're doing, they're gonna find those back doors too. So the cycle then repeats. So it's not possible to fix cybersecurity unless there's a, a combined effort, you know, between organizations, uh, board members, and actually governments that have to stop to do some of the things they are doing. Uh, so I think the problem is bigger than what many people think. Uh, I think, no, I know it is bigger than what many people think. So uh, the caution is, for me, is, yeah, do your stuff, uh, but try to, to increase your budget. You know, there are ways that you can minimize some of those threats. You will not be protected, okay? But you know you can make it more difficult for someone, yeah. So that's what. And you know, you know, I guess you and I spoke quite a quite a bit about this extensively. So we know how weak it is, everything out there at the moment, yeah. Yes, yes, yes exactly. I, I fully agree with you, Fernando. Like always, for the cyber security, it is always uh, nobody see it. Like now, definitely a lot of organization and uh, CEO and board member, they see the importance of it. But still, if you are as a CISO, you want to go and ask uh, uh, for increase in the budget for your cyber security, you need to fight for it. You really need to uh, convince the board Absolutely. why you need to uh, increase uh, uh, all layers of security you need in your enterprise, why you need to add encryption, why you need to uh, buy additional software, why you need, uh, we come again to a very important what Johannes uh, mentioned before, the awareness. I mean, the human, they are your weakest chain in security. And you go and you go ask for training awareness. Okay, they can do CBT, computer-based training. Okay, it's not enough maybe, we still human, we need the interaction even if it's virtual, but these people, they need to know how to avoid phishing, uh, social engineering. Uh, yes. uh, they need that to know how things. to create a strong password. Sorry, Fernando, what do you want? Yeah, sorry, there are two things that I, I, I wanted to mention. One of them is when you're looking at big data, one of the weakest points, and most of organizations, I've been there as well, yeah? is that you want to make the data available to your data scientists, anyone, your analysts. And, and the control I, has to be a, 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 quite a lot more, how should I say, robust, because um, there's a lot of... 
Yes. Shortcuts of who has access to what data, yeah? And that creates even bigger problems. And one last thing, sorry, I don't want to take the show. I know you have another question. You have to go then to the, the, the actually providers of cybersecurity solutions. And, and also, it doesn't matter if it's uh, messengers out there or Facebook, so it doesn't matter who they are. And we start to have to take things serious. People start need to start to look in those companies that are providing communication. It doesn't matter if it's VoIP or whatever. And things like the uh, ZRTP protocol. Yeah. If you start to look at that in terms of communication, believe me, uh, the game changes. And everybody that knows the RTP protocol knows exactly what I'm talking about because, you know, it makes it, it, today extremely difficult for anyone then to intercept your communications. But, you know, yeah. the, the tools are out there. Yeah. It's just people wanting to do it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Now, uh, the technology we hear today, we have a very interesting discussion about the IoT, the 5G, uh, blockchain, AI, big data analytic. And I believe today we are uh, like never before so interconnected. And uh, it is very important. Now, I would like to keep the last uh, 15 minutes from our time uh, to hear your insight. We have between us here like around 100 years of combined uh, experience, more or less. I would say 100 plus or maybe 99 plus <laughs> between us. And I would like to hear your insight. The most important things, how can businesses and nation actually prepare themselves for this, for this big data, for this uh, trade coming with all this interconnectivity we have uh, from the breaches, how they can prepare themselves, nation and businesses. And please feel free to start uh, right to left or left to right, or maybe we start uh, to hear Helen's uh, opinion first. Sure. There, there are actually layers of detail to achieve cybersecurity readiness, including technical, organizational, managerial, strategic, and financial considerations. Uh, at minimum, organizations need to understand their threat landscape. Right, who manages cybersecurity, what training available, what processes are in place, where the gaps are. And then they also need to determine which uh, standard framework they need to, they're gonna apply to their cyber resilience objectives. Uh, depends on the industry you're in. If you're in a highly regulated industry, there are additional framework you have to apply to in addition to NIST and many others. And then you need to identify and measure risk exposure, improve the defense in layers, right? And then reduce the vulnerability through people and culture. I always say that the common denominator is that cybersecurity controls consistently revolve around three key factors, people, process, and technology. From the people perspective, I think many of you already talked about earlier, you need to ensure the government, the board, the CEO and executive team have a solid understanding of cyber risk and the importance of cybersecurity. You'd be really surprised that many of them do not have a big, the common sense about what to do, where to start. And then um, uh, also really need to conduct regular employee training. It's not just about new hire onboarding, it's about continuous training and education on every single employee. Secondly, from the process perspective, you need to perform an audit right, to assess the risk landscape. Um, I mentioned earlier, a lot of shadow IT right, created that IT does not even know that existed. So it's so important for the CISO and, and others to really understand where exactly they are at. And then also establish a cadence to explore cyber risk. Just to have a framework, the process in place without a way to monitor or tracking the progress that won't really get you anywhere. You also need to have a cross-functional metrics that really pertain to cyber risk and cybersecurity. Because the board talks about you know, profitability, the, the bottom line all the time, but cybersecurity needs to be in the on the agenda, right? For them to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then from technology perspective, defense in in depth is so critical, right? Establish the layers of defense, the firewall, the admin, and multi-factor authentication, access management, 
auditing, whatever, and many of those needs to be in place. And then you need to automate the monitoring process to understand cybersecurity performance and align that investment with where the real world risks are for your business. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, you cover uh, really a 360 degrees of uh, what uh, businesses and nation can do. Uh, um, can you tell us, Joanne, what you can add? Uh, and please, uh, Charles, uh, Newton, Fernando, let's uh, make it interactive. Just uh, feel uh, free to, to, to immediately. You don't need to wait until uh, you return. Just uh, let's uh, mix the, the, the discussion. Johannes, uh, Jenny, can you please to add uh, what you can add for? I, I fully, I fully agree what what Helen said. It's a really 360 holi holistic picture and approach. I cannot say enough good things about the importance of critical thinking and and red team, like Mika uh, Siko did, for example, in his book. Perfect description and explanations why this has nothing to do with pen testing. It's really about learning how to think where things could go wrong and what you can do about it. So seeing critical thinking as a contribution, that's a very important step. There is, however, something, and, and especially the IT people don't like to discuss this, but it is something that we have to address. The IT teams and the IT experts have created in the past their own little universe. They are the experts, they know everything, and, and, and they are very good in one thing, saying no. <laughs> so compare it to a football team or for, for, the, um, for the US citizens, a soccer team. There's the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper is there when everybody else in the team screwed up. And the goalkeeper is extremely important, but the goalkeeper has a different shirt and plays by different rules. The goalkeeper is not really integrated into the team. In most cases, they even have separate training. Now, that is basically the, the role and the universe that the IT experts have created for themselves in the past. So yes, Helen, it's perfectly true that IT teams are not involved in whatever happens, but it also works in the other way around. And I do that with clients um, and it's never appreciated. I never make much friends in the IT departments but I take the entire IT department without exception and I put them in protective gear and with, with protective glasses on and, and helmets, whatever we need, and I march them through the plant and I ask questions and I ask a lot of questions because I, I'm an operation person, I'm an engineer, I understand all that stuff. No, no, no wonder that you don't come along with the IT team. <laughs> and it doesn't, take, it doesn't take longer than two to three minutes until we reach a point that nobody can answer the question about what is happening in the factory or in the process where IT is supposed to be contributing to. Yes. And that too has to change. So from both sides, involve IT, but IT, please be involved understand your business they're basically paying your technology and your salary so you could at least do much more effort to understand what is happening and that is when we start getting what i always call brick and mortar all the processes those are the bricks in cybersecurity and it will become the mortar holding everything together and, and making sure that the wall doesn't fall apart because if you just add a lot of bricks together the first wind and the wall is gone right that's an excellent so I, I want, I want, I agree. I want to add something uh, to that. So I have a, a little bit different view of that. So I let's not confuse IT with a security team, okay? In uh, the most organizations that are dealing with cybersecurity in a serious way, they actually separating both, okay? So IT is is there to do the jobs, and yes, of course, you know I, I manage quite a few service desks and etc. It is, it, it is tough and they get into problems. In the security team, by default, the word has to be, has to, has to be no. You have to justify first what you want because you cannot compromise on anything in security. Second, uh, any organization should really rethink the way they handle cybersecurity. Cybersecurity needs to be at the core and then build things from ground up. Yeah, structure everything. I'm not saying structure the business around 
uh, cybersecurity. But when it comes to anything related to information systems, anything related to digital being transformation or not, you have to put security first at the, at the core, the design, the business, the processes, whatever you want to design, all around the security first. And then when there is a request to change something or have something, you have to go and start from that ground up to make sure that your security is not compromised, yeah? So uh, having said that, you know, you know, I think most of you that work with the government understand what it means security, yeah? The first answer is no, tell me why, justify why, yeah? And then we can have a conversation and not the other way around. You are here just to, to decide whatever I want you to do or, you know, we pay your salaries. I don't see it that way. I actually see a synergy. I'm really <laughs> sorry to say that, but I have a completely different view. And I, and I think the business that are out there in the CEOs need to actually have a more understanding of technology and get involved as well on some of those things that people are talking because a lot of them, they don't even know what you're talking about and they don't care. So I think there is a problem in terms of education in cybersecurity. And yes, probably was the cybersecurity professionals that over the years didn't spend much time trying to educate everyone around the business. About I believe, about Charles, you want to add something to this? Yeah, I think the Sorry. security challenges are, are going to even get uh, greater because we're, we're now at a sort of a blur between the digital and physical worlds. And as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of new technologies coming on board, like Internet of Things, like 5G, potentially quantum computing down the line. And of course, uh, we have machine learning. And what it's doing now is it's sort of automating the threats from the adversary through the hackers. And, and that ability alone to target and to use deep fakes and all these different types of challenges now that are being posed to us really complicate the whole security model because we're not prepared for it. We have a huge security gap already. Globally, it's three and a half million people shortage. And we don't even know how to orchestrate right now what we have in our own uh, you know, companies. There, we have a variety of different products and services, but there's, very, there's a lack of expertise to know what works and what doesn't. And there's a, you know, a, a, we have a very few experts on encryption. So we're really facing, uh, I think, a really societal challenge um, that affects every, every country on the globe as we become more interconnected. I think with these technologies coming on board, um, if we don't prepare, you know, we're going to be sooner or later, we're going to have chips inside of us that can be hacked. Uh, auto, autonomous cars can be hacked. Uh, hospitals are already being hacked for ransomware. So until we can really look at now that we're being changed exponentially by the technologies now entering our marketplace, we're going to have a real, we're going to have even a worse security dilemma than we have right now. Sure, sure. No, I fully agree with you, uh, Charles. Uh, and I, I see we have a very nice mix actually today that we have the, uh, we really cover very well the, 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 the corporate side. And it's, I need to hear also Neaton because yeah, Neaton also worked a lot uh, with government. What, what do you have? What is your recommendation or what you can add to what the gentleman Fernando from the point of view for government, Charles, and to complement uh, uh, what Helen and John, uh, uh, JD, say. So, so, you know, in the interest of time, I, I agree. You know, I'm going to echo what my co-panelists said, you know, Helen, Charles, JD, and Fernando. So I, I agree with their thoughts. And I think uh, I'm going to summarize in just, just two, two or three quick points. You know, one, uh, I think we need to accept the problem. You know, yes, there is a, there's a cyber threat, you know, which is going to be an active business problem. Uh, second, be proactive, you know, be proactive and be, be informative that, you know, your, your team, your IT or data science team is dealing with those, you know, six Ps of big data, which is, you know, they've been dealing with huge volumes of data. They've been dealing with huge varieties of data. They've been, you know, the speed of data is almost real time, you know, it's real time, you know, we, we, we are dealing with the velocity of data. And then veracity, sometimes we don't even know the source of our data, you know, we, we collect so much so much open source data, the news, the blogs, the you know, social, sometimes we don't know the veracity of our source of the data and then the variability into it and sometimes the derived data, which we call value. So, so you know, be informed, accept that, you know, we, we, we have a threat, we have a problem. And then obviously, you know, do mitigation, you know, have your cyber resilience plan and, you know, you know so understand, ac ac accept, you know, understand and then have a mitigation plan to it. Sure, sure, I fully agree with you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we come uh, to the end of our day. Do you have any, uh, our session, sorry, and almost the day, uh, for me at least where I am standing, yeah, for, for sure, yeah. still early morning. <laughs> Uh, but for our session, uh, we pass uh, now exactly the time. There's any additional thought you would like to share with us, uh, ladies and gentlemen? I would, uh, I'll go I first. Just... Uh, yes, please. I say get, getting cyber fit is everyone's responsibility. So because the chain is only as strong as its weakest link, a company's ability to prevent crippling cyber attacks depends on its ability to cyber fortify each and every employee. Sure, sure. I uh, fully agree with you. Um, I would just say that we're, we're now uh, globally connected in, in two big areas. We're all facing the same COVID-19 threats and we're all facing the cybersecurity threats. And the, the closer we can work together and collaborate and, and work as, as one, the better we're gonna be at, at defeating the, you know, these threats. Very well said. Thank you, Charles. Very well said. I think I'm going to say interesting times, uh, you know, and, and COVID-19 has, uh, you know, given us that speed to adopt the, the technology, the digital transformation. And, you know, I mean, recalling the days, you know, when you were going to the retail shop asking for something, you know, it, it's not in the inventory to now, you know, where where your marketer knows what my personalized needs are, when I'm gonna, you know, my, my consumption history, you know, that when I'm gonna be coming to them for, for reshopping or refilling my stock, you know? So interesting times, you know, looking at the, 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 the history where we come from to the automation and to the AI, you know, in machine learning world, where, you know, more than us, you know, more than me, you know, my shoppers know where I'm gonna shop, what I'm gonna do next. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to have. I just want to add uh, as a final thought, which is take take a, as a principle that uh, your employee is your biggest threat. Okay, we all know that seventy percent of the threats. I think now more because of COVID and everybody working from home, uh, uh, either on purpose or not on purpose. You know, but most of the threats come from your inside your organization. Yeah, so you have really to take access control, identity, all of those basic things, yeah? Get the best products around that, yeah? And make sure that you build them from the ground up to the point where, you know, you are ready to go to the next stage with the, the board and the CEO and say, we need now to move to the next step in terms of hardening the, pro, the, the threats from the outside, yeah? And I would say always awareness, awareness, awareness. Correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. Absolutely. Excellent. JD, uh, you have any final thought you want to share with us? Uh... Yeah, there's a, a thing that I learned already in the military and, and also in my red team education and then later in cybersecurity. The biggest error in our thinking is that we focus on the, on the outside. We focus on the outside border and look if something happened there. And what we need to learn is assume that your organization is already exposed or your government, assume they're already there. And there's a 99.9% .9 chance that they are and the 0.1% is they are, but we haven't figured it out yet. So assume that your organization is already exposed and build the protective mechanisms in both directions. So outward as well as inward. And that starts with three basic layers, patch management from everything not only the expensive service, everything. Access control, as Ferdinand mentioned, extremely important and, and review that almost permanently. And the third thing is segregation. Segregate all those functions and make sure that you have controlled crossovers between those functions and not white ones. And when we then start looking at, at big data and as, as Nitin managed, mentioned, one of the challenges there is that everybody has access to everything and you cannot control that anymore because make that layer of controlled crossovers. And it's much better to have a person ask you, can I get that? And then organize it, then find out two days, two years later that they had access to everything and did with that whatever they wanted. And oh, now you have a litigation case or you have whatever problems because of that. Three sure. layers, patches, access, 
and segregation. And that's where you start. Exactly. I like uh, the point uh, you say very much because I always uh, repeat it to my customers about assume that you are already compromised. And I tell them, listen, if Facebook, the attack on Facebook is stand like 120 or 130 days undetected, Google, same, like 90 days undetected, the attackers was already there, took whatever he want, do all the uh, collateral movement he need until they detected. How you know that you are not now under attack? How you know there's nobody there <laughs> on your server? Reconnaissance is the biggest part. So they, exactly. they search for the vulnerabilities. That doesn't mean that they weaponize them yet. They just make sure yes. that they know exactly where your weak spot is and your weak spot and your weak spot. And when they need it, it's a flip of the switch. Exactly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We are a little bit over our time. I think I can spend like uh, hours uh, discussing with you and uh, get uh, more enlightened and more insight. Uh, it was really a great session. I enjoyed it very much. I hope everybody also enjoyed it, same like I did. Uh, thank you again for your time. It was really great. I would like also to extend my thanks for the Digital Week uh, online team uh, and special thank for our host, uh, Dennis Quarda and the team behind him in Tech ABC and especially uh, Serafima. She, they put, believe me, they put a lot of work in order to get this day successful. Thank you very much, Tech ABC. Thank you, Digital Week online. And thank you, uh, everybody today who watched us. I hope you enjoy it.